So with the shuttle company and the line of work I do, I see a lot of bikes, maintain a lot of bikes, ride a lot of bikes, and thanks to the way my brain works, I seem to have a million ideas of how I can make them better. Whether those ideas are any good or not is up for debate. So in these crazy times with lockdown keeping me out of the workshop and in the interest of staying sane, I'm challenging myself to design, prototype and hopefully ride all these crazy products that have been bouncing around my head for years. So this is the 48 hour design challenge bike edition. Alright, so welcome to episode 5 of my 48 hour design challenge. This one's going to be a lot quicker. I'm going to do it in one day. The plan is to make as many GoPro mounts for my bike as I possibly can. I bought this GoPro Euro 8 Black just before Christmas and it's been so sick, so so cool to have a GoPro like this to take the, the setup and the stress and the strain of making these YouTube videos. Most of what I do now and most of the shots you see come off the GoPro. The only stuff that isn't is obviously the kind of talking head stuff that you see that shot on my DSLR, all right? So the issue that I am having and have been having specifically with, within the last few videos where I go out and try to shoot specific parts of my bikes from specific angles is I just don't have all the mounts that work with all over the bike. So what I really wanted to do is not only make a whole lot of mounts, but show you how simple it is to make your own mount in Fusion with a 3D printer. Now, just a little side note of that. Obviously, most people don't have 3D printers, but you will be surprised how many people do, all right? So make a call out to mates, or ask if anyone's got a printer. I'll tell you now, one of your mates does. So that's one way to get a hold of a printer. The other way is that most schools now, most high schools now, and most libraries have 3D printers that the kids can use or in the library case that's public. So call around, see if you can get into that kind of scenario. And most of the time people are pretty cool and they'll, they'll bang out a quick little print, especially if it's something small like a little go for a mount. So that's my little side note. Back to this, what I'll do what I'll do with the whole scenario here with this video is I'm going to do the first bit as pure tutorial. All right, so I'm going to show you exactly how easy it is to bring in an STL file for this GoPro fixing and then make your own really simple rudimentary mounting to fit what you're trying to fit on. I'll probably do a handlebar mount or something simple. And then as you get better at Fusion, you can kind of, you know, get more crazy like what I'm going to do. The other thing that I'm going to do, and I'm going to start with all of the fixing points that I kind of developed over the last four videos. So that's underneath the rear saddle, the front fork fender, the plug, so up in the steerer tube, and then on the pedal. I'm going to take those 3D models that I did previous videos, and I'm going to convert those products to GoPro mounts, which I think is going to be pretty cool. After that, I'm just going to bang out as many GoPro mounts as I can for my bike, Get just get ridiculous with it, and then at the end of it, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully have a whole lot of mounts that I'll, I'll share down below. But just like the last one, if you want one of the products that I make in this video, bang a comment down below, let me know which one you want, and I will pick a couple people at the end of my next video just like I'm going to do in this one, and I'm going to send a couple of them out to you. So, bang in the comments down below if you want one, but other than that, let's get cracking. Okay, so first you want to do is jump into Fusion 360. This is a free CAD program, you can download it. And then what you're going to want to do is you want to insert a mesh now. If you look in the Thingiverse file that I've linked down below, you'll find this GoPro blank. You can bring this in, it's generic as anything and put it on the page. What I like to do is kind of get the important face. I'll just decide whichever that is that I'm going to build off. I'll try to get that as close to the origin as possible so I can use measurements from there. Okay, and there's your mesh. Next, what you're going to want to do is you want to create a base feature. So that's the kind of uh, generic geometry style of Fusion 360 and then you'll be able to edit it as normal. So in create, create base feature. Then what happens is under modify, you'll see a new option come up under mesh. And this is mesh to brep or brep to mesh. 
which obviously we want to turn this mesh into a brick. Some players click, click OK, job done. Now, very important here, you want to make sure that you click Finish Base Feature. If you don't do this, you're going to be working inside that base feature and it won't save any of your base operations. You can now see that once I've clicked Finish Feature, this becomes a normal geometry that I can push and pull and cut like I would normally, although it does have a lot of weird triangles. There are ways that you can get rid of these for the most part, but to me, in this context, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so moving forward, all I'm going to do here is just make a real simple circle. I used some of that parametric stuff that I did in the last few videos. I'm not going to do huge detail on here because obviously this is all dependent on what you're doing, how you're going to do it. The main thing is that you know how to bring an SDL in, convert it to a prep, and then start editing like you would normally. Once you are happy with your design, you can save them out as an SDL and then run them on the printer. I used those parameter controls that I put in to save out not one, but I think it was about 12 different sizes for different parts of the bike and bung them all on the printer. My favorite one of these is probably the one on the side of the handlebar, the kind of smaller diameter one. Gives a couple little options of how I can film myself. You can probably get really creative with these, but let's tuck into some really weird and wonderful ones now with old products. You'll recognize this. This is that hard case that I made in the first one. I just brought the file in, and what's nice about Fusion is you can actually just roll your geometry right back to some of the earlier stuff. This is super simple. All I did it here was bring in that base feature and then optimize it a little bit for print so it would print a bit easier. And then it just fixes underneath the seat with your normal cable tie system. This is probably one of my favorites. It's out of the way, it kind of just stays on the bike there. Also, I think the kind of follow cam is pretty rad. What I've seen other people use these for is to show a bit better the steepness of stuff. I didn't ride anything steep, but you get the idea. Also, you can see yourself passing people. Okay, next we tackle this clip on SPD thing I did in the second video. To be honest, when I I did this one, it actually I actually fixed the issue I had in the original one with how it fixes. Here is just one M3 bolt that goes right through. This one was pretty rad. It turned out to be not only the most risky one, but also some of the raddest footage. You got to be so careful with your GoPro, especially this year with me riding on the road. Interesting angle though. Oh, I think it's pretty cool. And then from episode three, we've got the Mud God one. This one's straight for it as again. All I did was pop that little base feature on there. Same deal. I then messed around for ages optimizing it for print just so that I could get away with not using any build material, but you get that. Installation, same as before, a couple cable ties and job done. This one actually looks pretty tidy. It, it messes up how nice my fender looks, but the view that it gets is pretty cool. I quite like how close it is to the wheel and you can actually see the tread working. So these next two kind of prove the point that not everything works. Just a little pre-warning. Obviously, you got you got you got to crack some eggs to make an omelet, eh? So let's have a squizzy at this one. This is from the last video, the plug. Here I actually used the first part of that, so just a little small one. This was reasonably easy and actually quite nice to print because all I had to do was just edit that one piece of the whole print and print that. I'm sure you'll be seeing the huge flaw that I've made right off the bat with this. That area where the GoPro is is exactly where the fork is meant to compress to the tire. So, yeah, on the first ride, I actually had it fail quite catastrophically. I did, I did come off quite badly. I did a jump, landed, the fork compressed completely, 
and that what that little bung went right <laughs> right through the fender. That broke, the front broke, and obviously Murphy's Law is I didn't get any of it on a GoPro. But oh well. I'd actually say that this could get quite a cool like, kind of downward view at the shock moving on the ground, but you wouldn't want to be riding anything crazy that you're gonna use the full travel, you know. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, so this one was super dumb, clips onto the bottom of the pedal. It broke within maybe 30 seconds of riding. Luckily my GoPro wasn't attached. And last but not least was one that goes through the top cap of the steerer tube. Super easy, but actually makes for a pretty cool talking head kind of view. Here's me, yawn, 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 talk, talk, talk. Man, I've put on some lockdown weight. Ooh. This was a quick little challenge in saying that I had to really keep my print times down so that I could print all of these things in that 24 hours. Almost every single one of these has broken on my bike subsequently. And that's mainly because of my print settings. So I used 0.3, uh, as little infill as possible, and turbo settings, so the highest speed. What you would really want to do, I'd say, was at least go down to a 0.2, get your infill way up. If you can go all the way full on one of these smaller ones, it's not that big a deal. And then also slow the print down so you get a good adhesion between each layer. That'll really make, you know, for some solid prints. The only ones that are left on my bike, and I'm probably going to keep them, is that steerer tube one and then the one underneath the seat. They kind of disappear. You don't notice them when you're not using the GoPro, so they'll stay. Links to all the files will be down below. If you did want to get your hands on one of these, just, you know, leave me a comment down below which one you really enjoy or which one you want, and I'll pick a couple people at the end of my next video, and I'll send them out to you. The people that get the little plug thing from last week, your names will be here somewhere. Get in contact with me on Instagram, or I think my email is somewhere. <laughs> get in touch with me, and I'll, I'll figure out how to send you out the last, the, the little plug thing, all right? Other than that, we will see you next week. I've got something really cool planned. Um, yeah, see you later.